This is Hoboken Terminal, one of the most iconic train stations in New Jersey. Today, this video will be a trip report. We will be riding the NJ Transit Morris and Essex line from Hoboken Terminal to Summit Station. Upon entering Hoboken Terminal, you are greeted with a wide variety of, well, everything. First off, you have up to 17 trains terminating here all at once, due to there being 17 platforms and tracks. Second off, the waiting hall is absolutely stunning. People say New Jersey Transit isn't really very good at preserving their history, but I highly disagree, being that the Lackawanna Railroad sign is still on the outside of the terminal. Inside the waiting hall, you'll find a small deli store for you to buy snacks or drinks for your train ride. Pretty charming if you ask me. Today's train is Gladstone Branch Line train number 419, departing at 12.36pm on track 17. You can also view your train departures on these smaller TV screens inside the waiting hall. One of my favorite features of this terminal is that inside the waiting hall features a tiny scale layout of a locomotive on tracks within a large glass box known as the Railman for Children. Beyond the waiting hall is a small corridor that takes you to the New York Waterway terminals and boarding areas. Very, very practical if you ask me. Here you can see a pair of New Jersey Transit trains on tracks 13 and 14 preparing for departure. Let's take a look at our platform for today, with a 3 car set of General Electric Aero 3 EMUs already waiting for us. Buying a ticket today was very difficult because these machines in particular weren't being cooperative at all. I purchased a round trip ticket for an adult which is costing at $18 but the machine only gave me a one-way ticket. But luckily, I told the staff about it and they fixed it almost immediately and I got both tickets successfully. Now that the ticket situation is finished, it's now time to board our train. When boarding the train, we're greeted with the classic 3x2 seating on most of the single-level train cars on New Jersey Transit's train roster. Unfortunately, the New Jersey Transit train staff has blocked off the entire front car for any passengers for a reason that I still don't know. I'm not sure if the train staff forget to wipe the windows at all, but this is by far one of the dirtiest windows I've ever encountered on a train. Now switch to the other side, all we have to do is wait for our departure in 10 minutes. Seating on the Aero 3 is very nice with decently comfortable seats and more than enough legroom to stretch out. Just before we bid farewell to Hoboken, we are greeted by a 4 car Aero 3 set coming from the Montclair Booten line and terminating on the track adjacent to our train. As we finally get on the move around 2 minutes late, we see a train on track 15 boarding for the Bergen County line with GP40 number 4205 in tow. The train staff told me not to record until we were out of Hoboken Yard, but I really did not want to miss the opportunity of getting a quick glimpse of New Jersey Transit number 4109, which is a heritage unit representing the Central Railroad of New Jersey. Thank you. 
This curve here splits the Morrison, Essex, Montclair, Boudin, and Gladstone lines from the Maine, Bergen County, and Pascack Valley lines due to them both having different stations after Hoboken. A little later, we appear to be at a slow pace while racing another train. This line is a little more scenic than you might think because now we are passing over what I think is the Passaic River. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure maybe subscribe to this channel and maybe leave a comment stating your opinions. Thanks in advance! While en route to our first stop in Newark, we see another train heading back east into New York. Newark offers nice enough city scenery as we pull into Broad Street Station a few minutes later. Once again crossing the Passaic River, we encounter one of New Jersey's oldest bridges and it's quite famous for being one of the largest. It's called the Newark Drawbridge and it was opened in 1903. Now out of Newark, we can now see a very nice view of the suburbs of East Orange, New Jersey. These next two stations will serve this town. It's always neat to know that every time we stop in the oranges, we're technically on elevated trackage since we're above the road. That's probably the only thing I like about this section of the line. Now for our train statistics. Our train is New Jersey Transit train number 419 and is obviously powered by a three car set of, of General Electric Aero 3 electric multiple unit coaches, the third variant of the Jersey Aero family that I'll explain in a later video. It has an AC asynchronous propulsion system that also includes high power traction motors with a total of about 375 horsepower per two axle truck. Since this is a three car train, we multiply that number by 6 to get our total horsepower of 2,250 horsepower for our entire train. The Gladstone line runs from Hoboken to Peapack and Gladstone with a total of about 45 miles. Total travel time between the two stations comes out to 1 hour and 35 minutes. It only takes that long because of the many stops the train has to serve, which counts as 24 stations in total. Now you may be wondering, why Summit of all stops? To explain this, I like Summit Station due to it being very unique to me as Summit is the last stop where both the Morrison Essex and Gladstone lines run together. After Summit, there are a set of switches that westbound trains follow through in order to go to their designated lines. After Summit, the Gladstone branch begins at New Providence. Also after Summit, the Morrison Essex line continues to Chatham, Madison and beyond. The Morris and Essex line meets up with the Montclair Boudin line at Denville Station not too far out from Summit Station and both lines run together to terminate at Hackettstown. 
The Gladstone branch continues past New Providence into Murray Hill, Berkeley Heights, and so on and so forth until the trains terminate at Gladstone Station. Heading on Maplewood, we are met with the nicest suburban town views I have ever seen on a New Jersey transit line. You also get a direct view of the suburban houses and street names, which is also really cool to me. We are now approaching the station that serves New Jersey's richest or wealthiest town, Short Hills. Short Hills, like most of the stations we have passed, was formerly used by the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western until the early 1960s when their merger with the Lackawanna Railroad took over, being called the Erie Lackawanna Railway. The area that became Short Hills was initially part of the Springfield Township, and its eponymous hills are thought to have played a role in the movement of the Continental Army under George Washington during the Battle of Springfield. While troops may have been present in that area, the, the Battle of Short Hills took place in Scotch Plains and Metuchen on June 26, 1777. Being that Short Hills is the final station before Summit, I think it's safe to say that we are about to arrive at our destination home free in a time of 50 minutes. Our destination is finally here. While arriving at Summit, I hurried off the train to get a shot of the Arrow 3 set leaving towards Gladstone. Up ahead, you'll see those switches I mentioned earlier. Right now, the Air 3 is using two of those switches to switch onto the Gladstone branch and resume its journey. Now that we are at Summit Station, let's take a look around. For the platforms, they certainly look nice, but they don't really have special frills to them as it pretty much checks all the boxes for any other traditional commuter rail station. 
The entrance and waiting room look very nice as the doors are automatic but pushing them open is also optional. The waiting room has traditional benches on the overpass above two of the three tracks along with very clean windows allowing for passengers to have a very lovely view from the station overhead. There were a lot of people in this waiting area so I tried not to put them on camera so that explains why it's down for most of the walk through. Hopping onto track 2, we can clearly see where the eastbound trains come into the station, but when we focus on the other side, where the westbound trains come in, there are a lot of switches past, and which you could probably guess, the Morrison SX and Gladstone trains use these switches to switch onto their designated lines. Sorry for the short station review because I know I missed a lot, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this trip report. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure to subscribe and comment. See you, see you all in the next video. Yeah, you can, uh, you can just walk on it. Alright. It might be probably that zone though.